What Cepheid does is we develop tests, not just any ordinary test, uh, not like a test that you have to send into a lab and wait for days to get a result. We develop fully integrated diagnostics, which, which go from a sample to an answer in usually less than an hour. Our test is going to be, again, fully integrated. You won't have to send it out to a central lab for testing, so you don't have to wait for the transport time and the lab to do the test. It's done on site, closer to the patient. So the result is a faster turnaround time. It'll be very similar, almost identical to the way the flu RSV test currently works, which means you collect a swab. In this case, it'll be a nasopharyngeal swab. It goes into a transport medium. You transfer some of the transport medium to the cartridge and then run the test. So a send out four hour test is not really a four hour test. You gotta send it first. You gotta wait for transport during traffic to get the sample to the central lab. Then you gotta wait for the batch to fill up in the central lab for that four hour run. And then you gotta wait for all the results to be recorded and sent back. So the reality of it is most labs doing reference lab testing now are waiting several days two to four days, uh, and that's really not fast enough to make decisions in real time about patient management. There is a lot of I interest in, um, in other sample types for testing, throat swabs, nasal swabs. We think getting a start with nasopharyngeal is a, is a good place to start because we'll get both nasal and nasopharyngeal uh, detection. Um, we may eventually be able to expand the label to go to other sample types, but initially upon launch, we're focusing on nasopharyngeal as sort of a screening tool. You know, right now, the recommendation is during the flu season, when flu and respiratory syncytial virus are prevalent, you need to first rule out the most likely cause of a respiratory illness during the season, which is gonna be flu and RSV. And then you would reflex to a coronavirus test if you still suspect another cause, a coronavirus as the, as the infecting agent. The critical steps are identifying the right mixture of reagents that will work together in a single reaction to produce a multiplexed answer. We want a multiplexed result because we want the virus to uh, be detectable even if it mutates. So we want multiple targets to be present. We want some of them to be broad range to cover all viruses in the family and some to be specific for the current coronavirus. Th th that also makes it possible to use, that broad range capability makes it possible to use for the next time this happens, and it will happen again. There are many viruses in this family that can potentially cause human infection, and this is one of them. This was identified years ago. Uh, there are many more that are kind of out there that could happen as well. Uh, we're saying uh, weeks, it's weeks away at this point. Uh, our, you know, we've done this before. We've done a pandemic response to Ebola that took about f uh, five months. Uh, we're hoping to break all of our records at this point in terms of getting a, a test out and available from start to finish in less, much less time than that. I mean, there's a history of coronavirus test development in China. First, uh, some of the tests that were initially launched just didn't turn out to work very well. We don't want to make those same missteps. We want to have a product that works uh, upon release. We are preparing for the manufacturing requirements to scale up manufacturing so that when we actually launch the product and it is cleared, we or uh, under the emergency use authorization, we will be ready for launch. So that we will have product on the shelf. We will not be announcing it and then saying it will be available sometime later. It will be available at the time we get the authorization. One of the things we've done is to identify parts of the viral genome that are conserved among all the family members of the SARS bat coronavirus family. And so what this does, it provides at least one target that would be functional even with a different member of the family. The other, the other advantage of having a conserved target is that's, that's conserved between family members is that's a region of the virus that's less likely to change over time, less likely to drift because it's already shown to be conserved. So the bottom line is that it provides a stability uh, that you'd like to have for a, a test that you want to be taking forward for the future.